There is a fascination about old maps which many people feel. Not only are they often beautiful objects, but they show the world as it was in days gone by, or at least how people at the time thought it was. They let us see the past through the eyes of its contemporaries, allowing us to learn what they believed about their world. There were, of course, many mistakes on old maps. Rivers running wrong courses, cities placed incorrectly, coastlines lacking bays, and mountains and lakes missing completely. One type of mistake, called a cartographic myth, is of particular interest, for these are geographic features that appear on a map, but not on the earth. Kingdoms or cities where none ever were, or lakes and rivers where there is but dry land. Cartographic myths have always been one of the aspects of my profession that I enjoy the most. So the Philadelphia Print Shop West is going to produce a series of online lectures on this topic. The series, called Illusions, Delusions, and Confusions, will examine cartographic myths across the centuries and around the world. As the series title indicates, there are a number of reasons why cartographic myths appeared on old maps. First, there were delusions, that is, beliefs for which there was no real evidence. This included things like folk tales and legends. It also included mistaken academic theories, where scholars would construct an elaborate explanation of why there had to be a continent on the far side of a sea or a mountain range had to be located in a particular place. There were also delusions resulting from lies or hoaxes. Another source of these myths were illusions, that is, misperceptions of evidence. This could be things like mistaking a line of clouds on the horizon for a range of snow-capped mountains, or thinking you were sailing into a strait when you were actually on a river. And finally, there are myths based on confusions, that is, the jumbling or misinterpreting of evidence. This could come from the mistranslation of a report in a foreign language, or the misreading of an explorer's report, or mistaking where you were in the ocean, so placing a newly discovered island miles from its actual location. Whatever their basis, almost all cartographic myths share an element of wishful thinking. They usually represented things that people wanted to be there, rich lands to conquer, a possible ally or trading partner, or an easy route to a desired destination, like the riches of the Orient. While that wishful thinking usually did not actually create the myths, it certainly facilitated the creation and made it harder to erase them from the map once their non-existence was proved. This last aspect of cartographic myths is particularly interesting, that is, that they were very hard to get rid of. Many of these places appeared on maps for a long time, even well after they were proved to be non-existent. Once a feature was, quote, on the map, it took on a reality in people's minds. Many times, if a city or lake or other non-existent place proved not to be located where it was put on the map, Subsequent cartographers would simply move it over the horizon or around the corner, preferring to relocate the myth rather than simply remove it. Some of that was the wishful thinking I mentioned earlier, but it also stemmed from the fact that many cartographers tended to be a bit lazy, so they simply copied what was on the older maps rather than completely redrawing a map based on the new information. Thus, many non-existent places appeared again and again over the years, even once they had been shown by explorers not to exist. The topic of cartographic myths is not simply a fun topic to pursue, though it is that, of course. It is also important in understanding our past. Why today we see that these myths are follies, to their contemporaries they were real. Cartographic myths both spurred and shaped explorations, so they allow us to see why people acted the way they did. They also help us understand the desires and hopes of our ancestors. One common characteristic about cartographic myths is that they tended to appear in places beyond those that were well known. This map shows the world as Europeans knew it near the end of the 15th century. It depicts Europe, Asia, and Africa, though much of even those areas was not known that well at the time. It is precisely in those areas beyond what was known that cartographic myths appeared, in places that were hard to get to or that had not yet been visited. Of course, it is just about that time that the world was hugely expanding for Europeans, and most of the newly discovered places lay beyond the horizon of the known world. Thus, most of these newly revealed lands became fertile ground for cartographic myths. This series of lectures, Illusions, Delusions, and Confusions, will survey many of these cartographic myths. 
We will look at the original maps which showed them, consider the history of why they were put on the maps, and also the history of how those myths were eventually removed. I hope these lectures will be both entertaining and informative about this fascinating part of our history.